So now in recipe views.py, we're gonna go ahead and implement a lot of the things we've already done before. And those things have to do with a concept called CRUD. Now we've done create, retrieve. We have not yet done update and delete. Those two parts are fairly easy, but this is a really common thing inside of web applications, it's called CRUD. And so let's go ahead and implement the things that we for sure know. So first and foremost, we're gonna define the recipe and detail view, and that takes in a request and some sort of argument. In my case, I'm gonna pass in the ID. We'll worry about what it returns in a moment. Now, this is a form of the retrieve view. Another form is something called a list view, where we actually have the entire list of these things. Both of these we will end up using. Next, of course, is the create view. This, of course, requires me to have a form of some kind, right? So the form is going to be something like the recipe form, like the actual model form itself. And this is actually very similar to what we would do for the update view as well. So let's go ahead and do request um, post or none, and then copy that and then the update view. Cool. So we'll come back to the delete view later, but for now we've got these. Great. So what do we need to do with the list view? This is probably the easiest one, and it's just from.models import the recipe. Now in this case, for this view, it doesn't take any arguments, so I can just get rid of that. And I'm just gonna add in the query set of recipe.objects.all. But is this the right query set? Of course it's not. So it's actually filter the user being request.user. Okay, so that actually means that if I'm requiring the lookup to be based off of this user, then that means that I need to use that, that decorator of login required, which we imported in the article model. So this is the import right here. So this login required, we'll go ahead and put it in on each one of these things, because I definitely want only a user adding this stuff because they will be added to the user we've got. Okay, so this is the query set now. So that also gives us the context and we're gonna call that query set object list and it's gonna be QS. And then of course it's gonna return render the request, our template name. In this case, I'll go recipes slash list.html and then our context dictionary. So this of course is not a whole lot different than what we're doing in the detail view, but there's something I haven't showed you yet and that is another shortcut and that's called get object or 404. And what this will allow me to do is pass in a get object method here. So get object or 404, the actual model instance itself, so recipe, and then the ways I want to do the lookup, so the actual parameters. So of course, ID being passed in here from the request itself, and also of course, the user itself. So in this case, I only want users that match that ID. So in other words, the requested user for sure have access to this object. Um, this is just one way to check that permission because they own it. And so in this case, let's go ahead and also add in object and object, and then we'll change this to detail. Okay, so one of the things you might be wondering is what does this do exactly? Well, it's actually very similar to what we did in articles for the article detail view. It's very similar to this. Um, I don't actually believe it will do multiple objects returned, but since we are basing this off of the ID itself, um, we shouldn't ever have multiple objects, right? So if we were going off of the slug field, then I would recommend you do something more like this. Okay, cool. So now we've got those. Of course, we still need to implement the templates and we will, uh, but let's actually create the recipe form so we can see how to do the update view. Um, so we've already know how to do the create view, so we will come back to that. But the update view is actually very similar to the detail view. So if you think about it, I'm trying to update any given instance. So that means I need to know what that ID is, which is why I actually passed that in there. And so we actually have essentially this right here. And then of course the context itself, I would need to pass in the form in here as well. So naturally we will need to handle that form data. And inside of this create view, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. And now what we wanna do is create the recipe model based off of the fields that we want to require, or at least have on display. So the ones I'm gonna have on display are name, description, directions, and that's it. I'm gonna leave active just as a field that we're not gonna use yet. So just these three. So let's go ahead and create a form file. So forms.py, and then it's from Django import forms. And then from 
dot models. We're going to go ahead and import our recipe model and then we'll do class recipe form. And of course it takes in forms and model form. And then we're going to go ahead and do class meta. The model is the recipe and then the fields are going to be the name, the description and the directions. Cool. So we've got that. Let's bring that in here. So from dot forms import that recipe form now. Okay. So what is it that we're trying to do in this view? Well, the creating of it, we'll just want to check if form dot is valid. And now I'm going to go ahead and say obj equals to form dot save commit equals to false. Since I have this login required here, I can actually do obj dot user equals to request dot user and then obj dot save. And of course, now I want to return that redirect again. So I'm going to go ahead and import that one. So the redirect being back to obj dot get absolute URL. Now, in this case, I actually don't have this method. So before I go any further, I'm just going to go ahead and write it. Now, I know I didn't have this method because I remember never actually writing it. I typically write the get absolute URL method when I actually create the view for it itself, if I ever do, right? So in the recipe ingredients, maybe I actually never create a view for it. But in this case, what I would end up doing is the actual recipe ingredient might not have its own detail view, but what it often have is a URL maybe to the actual recipe itself. So get absolute URL, right? And in this case, recipe cannot be none or should not be none. So then this should work just fine. In the case of this URL, we are going to have a redirect at some point. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and do pantry and recipes. So pantry being like my library, right? You can think of it that way. Um, not so much of like just inventory, but also all of the recipes I might have on hand. Now, the reason I'm actually not doing it as just slash recipes is more related to what the global URL might look like. So I'm just going to leave it in as just simply pantries, but feel free to change that URL how you like. Obviously, I haven't mapped the URL yet, but I just wanted to make sure that this form, as far as I know off the top of my head, all of the things that definitely needed to happen, except for, of course, the template. And so now I'm going to go ahead and add in the data here. And this, of course, is going to be our create.html. And then the context itself is going to be related to the form. So context equals to, and it's simply just form and form. Okay. And so this data, at least most of this data can exist on this update view as well. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and copy the context or actually the form is valid method all the way down. And we'll go ahead and paste this in here. Okay. And so do I actually need to reset the user? Well, no, I do not need to reset the user. In fact, I probably just need to do form.save. So if it's valid, we're just going to go ahead and save it and then call it a day. Right. And so the question is, do I actually need to return a redirect to this? And in my mind, the answer is no. Um, I would just save it and turn some sort of message back. In this case, I'll just use the context and say message being, um, you know, you've saved your data or data saved. Right. There are other ways to have messages that are a little bit more robust than this, but this is easy enough. And so now we see that this actual view, each one of these views could actually use the same template. So I'm actually going to call this the create-update.html. And then that, that way we just adjust for the different messages. You know, um, so that's kind of the, the idea here. Since they are both using the form, one does pass in the object as well. But we'll take a look at what that means in a moment. Now, there is one key thing about this update view that I haven't mentioned, and that is using the actual object. So reordering these things, I would actually pass in the instance like this. So the actual object instance will be re retrieved here, and then we'll set it to the form here. Now we've actually already seen this before or all of these before, and that is in the Django admin. So if I come in here, let's go ahead and just talk about it. First of all, if I click here, this is the list view. This could have a bunch of different things, right? So that's that very first view, okay? So then when I click on one, 
Um, believe it or not, this is actually the detail view or really the update view. So one slash change. So there's not really a detail view in the admin, although one could consider both the detail view, the update view as well, right? So the biggest question for our current design is do we even need a quote unquote detail view? My intuition is no, because if a user is reviewing their pantry, they might be wanting to just change it, right? But then again, once we actually implement it, maybe they do just want to review it and not necessarily edit it. We will be implementing both. Um, and so in here, we now have the update view, the detail view, and of course there is that create view where we can add a recipe here. So we've actually already seen all of these things in action. I just handled all of the logic. Now, of course, we need to implement the URL and templates for each one of these.